This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting Systems. On CNN Sports, a Big East battle and the Hoyas holler as John Thompson makes an early exit at the Carrier Dome. On Tobacco Road, the Tar Heels tried to outfox the Blue Devils and a tale of two troubled teams, the Terps and the Wolfpack. In the NBA, the Bulls passed right by Boston. And if you think this looks bad, listen to this. It's crunch time at the Good Ranch 500, all coming up on CNN Sports. Hi, everybody. Welcome to CNN Sports Tonight. I'm Hannah Storm. And I'm Gary Miller. We'll have all that action for you in the next half hour, but a story of tragic, just epic proportions that happened late this evening that's cast a pall over the sports world today. It was truly shocking what happened. Loyola Marymount forward Hank Gathers died tonight after collapsing on the court in the first half of Loyola's game against Portland. Gathers, the nation's sixth leading scorer, collapsed in convulsions during a semifinal game in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Moments after dunking on a spectacular alley-oop play, he trotted to midcourt and then crumbled to the ground. Here's the play that we showed you. Gathers, then going to midcourt. And with this amount of time left in the game, he struggled after crumbling to the ground, tried to get up, and then went back down on the ground at midcourt. He was surrounded by three paramedics very quickly and his mother, Lucille, uh, just shortly after this, uh, Gathers was administered emergency treatment outside the gym. His teammate, his boyhood friend from Philadelphia, Bo Kimball, was at his side when he was administered that treatment. Gathers was later taken to Daniel Freeman Memorial Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 6.55 p.m. of cardiac arrest. Both teams left the court after that incident. And that game, as well as the second game of the tournament, was postponed, and there will be no tournament games on Monday night. Back on December 9th, Gathers had fainted during a game against UC Santa Barbara, and at that time, doctors said they could not determine the cause of his blackout. Gathers was one of the nation's finest ball players. He led the country in scoring and rebounding last season. Hank Gathers was 23. Gathers' death not only renders continuing the West Coast Conference Tournament unthinkable right now, it overshadows all of college basketball. Earlier in the afternoon, been in this chair for about a month. But tonight in Los Angeles, a story that transcends all merriment that is usually the world of sports. Hank Gathers, senior from Loyola Marymount, the 11th leading all-time scorer in NCAA history, led the NCAA in scoring last year, led the NCAA in rebounding last year, collapsed during the first half of his LMU's WCC quarterfinal game in Los Angeles against Portland. At 6.55 West Coast time, he was pronounced dead at Daniel Freeman Marina Hospital about an hour and 20 minutes after his collapse. This was a scene about seven minutes into the first half. The gathers uh, with the stuff, and LMU led 25 to 13. Then got that back to play defense. You'll hear a whistle, and you might want to turn your head. Some of you at home will not like to see what's coming up. After the whistle, gathers seemingly fine. Takes a couple of steps and collapses. Writhing in pain, attended on court by team personnel. Tried to get up once and collapsed again. The second time this season he has collapsed at home at the Gersten Pavilion. Happened back in December to game against Santa Barbara. Then this scene, mother and sister rushed from the stands. A stunned crowd, a stunned arena. He was taken off onto a stretcher. Went to a hospital. And an hour and 20 minutes later, Hank Gathers was pronounced dead, as we said, at 6.55 Pacific Coast time. He had missed a couple of games after the, the first collapse. Uh, they were wondering whether it was a regular heartbeat was the story. But he convinced doctors that he was okay. They cut back on his medication. And Gathers, early in February, scored 44 points in one game against St. Mary's. There was no warning that such a thing could happen again. A tragedy has struck out in Los Angeles, and Chris Myers is uh, at the hospital uh, right now, let's uh, go to Chris for the latest. Chris, uh, the scene out there? All right, thank you, Chris. It's a uh, chilly night here in Los Angeles at the Daniel Freeman Hospital, and we are joined by the uh, athletic director of uh, Loyola Marymount, Mr. Brian Quinn. And, of course, moments ago, Paul Westhead uh, here. Some of the players were here from the Loyola basketball team, and they left the area. Uh, Dr. Weiss is inside meeting with Hank Gather's uh, mother and brother who happened to be here. The question that most will ask is, 
should Hank Gathers have been playing basketball after that initial heart ailment in December or that fainting spell? Well, a complete medical clearance was granted for him to participate in all athletic uh, endeavors. So uh, the answer, uh, you know, certainly would be yes. The feelings right now with the family, with Paul Westhead, uh, can you describe them? Well, they're distraught, uh, deeply saddened, uh, as you would expect. Uh, they're, uh, you know, of course, under the circumstances, it's very difficult to describe the pain they're feeling. But, uh, you know, the family's together, and I, I think they're a close family. From what we understand, the seizure taking place on the court, uh, he, he, he was conscious at some time before he was rushed to the hospital here uh, in the marina uh, where Dr. Mason Weiss, the cardiologist, uh, acting cardiologist at the moment, took over. Of course, later uh, pronounced him uh, dead. Was there much talk of between here and there that there was a chance to revive him? I couldn't really tell you that because, you know, a doctor would have to tell you, one of the attending physicians would have to tell you that. Um, I really couldn't answer that question. Okay. Well, Dr. Weiss could answer that question, and Dr. he is uh, with us. If you can step up here, doctor. And uh, after the uh, fading uh, spell and the heart problem in December, uh, there were questions if Hank Gathers could play basketball or should play, and he obviously did play again. He was cleared, understandably so. Is this the correct move? Uh, I really can't comment on that. I wasn't his attending physician at the time. I just took care of him from the time that he landed here at the Marina Hospital. So I think that that would be better post to his doctors. He was under medication. He was under medication right up to and including the today as far as I know. Is there a chance that that medication could have contributed to the problem? Unlikely. I gather that he improved from what I was told on the medication. Now back in December, Hank Gathers was said to have an irregular heartbeat or an accelerated heartbeat. Is that correct? I really don't know the details as to his rhythm problem at that time in, in detail. Uh, one of my associates who was looking after him will be back in L.A. shortly and probably we'll talk to you then. What were the, the chances uh, from the time that the seizure took place at Loyola Fieldhouse and the time he was brought here to the hospital of reviving him? I think the chances were good and that uh, everything was appropriately done at the game. Uh, immediate resuscitative measures were taken uh, and uh, in somebody in his physical shape uh, every and all possible efforts should be undertaken uh, and were for about an hour and a half after he initially arrested at the game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, much to everybody's chagrin, uh, there was never any evidence of spontaneous heart activity that we could measure on a monitor or blood pressure or anything else like that from the time that he arrived over here. To your knowledge, uh, family trace of heart problems? Uh, I really haven't had a chance to even talk to a family uh, in that regard. The uh, chances uh, when someone plays basketball, the kind of sport that it is, uh, does it not put more strain on the heart uh, than the average for, or maybe a person who does not play basketball? Uh, this individual is playing basketball uh, at the extremes for many years, and this event obviously had not occurred up until tonight, so I, I, that would be speculation. As these people are uh, more than used to playing under extremes of physical conditioning, and, and they don't die usually. I guess another way to ask the question, would his chances have decreased uh, of having heart failure uh, had he not been playing basketball? Uh, I really, that would be pure speculation on my part. You know, people who have rhythm problems of the heart, uh, who are under therapy, uh, can have cardiac arrest, uh, whether or not they're playing basketball or just sitting in a chair. So I, I really think that I can't really answer that. Can you, in uh, simple terms, again, doctor, uh, describe uh, when he was uh, pronounced dead exactly what what took place for the layman out there who doesn't understand the heart and all of the, the uh, intricacies and how it works? I think basically uh, he collapsed at the game. Uh, he had a palpable blood pressure to the physician who was there at the scene uh, initially, and uh, he was somewhat responsive for a few seconds. I'm not really sure the exact time factor. Uh, subsequently, his breathing deteriorated. He was noted to have some seizure activity. Uh, and from the first available recording read at the scene of his rhythm, he had uh, no rhythm that was compatible with life. And from that point onwards, uh, full resuscitative measures were undertaken on the court, in the ambulance, in the emergency room by the initial emergency room physician, and subsequently by myself, uh, all told probably an hour and a half uh, uh, of full resuscitative measures without any evidence documented of any uh, cardiac rhythm or blood pressure or anything else. Even under those prolonged circumstances, uh, there's still a chance that 
uh, he could come back, and that's why things were continued for that duration of time. But uh, unfortunately, all to no avail. All right, well, thank you very much under You're these uh, stressful situations. Dr. Mason Weiss, the acting cardiologist here at the Daniel Freeman Hospital uh, in Marina Del Rey. Hank Gathers, who turned just 23 years old last February, uh, is dead, pronounced dead this evening in uh, Los Angeles. Let's go back now to Sports Center. All right, Chris, uh, thank you very much. And Hank Gathers, as many a friend uh, around the college basketball world, you don't have to be really just involved with college basketball. You tell by the way he has handled himself that uh, he was a little bit different. One of his best friends, he grew up in Philadelphia, among Bo Kimball, who was also a teammate of his at Loyola Marymount, Lionel Simmons, the great all-time player, the senior for LaSalle, who was in action tonight, uh, semifinal action in the MAAC, and he was informed during LaSalle's game this evening against Siena a short while ago, and uh, that was his reaction. He could not continue playing uh, LaSalle's game against Siena this, afternoon, uh, this evening uh, in Albany. Uh, as he was overcome uh, with the news as so many of us have been. Chris Fowler, uh, college basketball maven tonight. Uh, you had a chance to, to get to know him a little bit. Uh, you went out to, to Los Angeles uh, recently. He's a different guy, wasn't he? Tremendous guy, very likable guy. Wanted to be a sportscaster. He's very involved in internships and, and student television radio programs in Loyola Marymount. Extremely popular with his teammates. And I'll tell you, when I, when I spoke with him last month, he was very concerned about his medication. Doctors had him on heavy doses of medication after that first collapse in December, and he was very sluggish. He couldn't play basketball, and that troubled him more than anything. I mean, he loved basketball more than anything, really just a couple of months away from being drafted in the NBA, a certain first-rounder and, yes. and a certain millionaire in basketball, and I think that um, it, it obviously hurt him not to be able to play basketball. He was able to convince the doctors to slowly back away on the amount of medication he was taking, and as the medication was taken off, he became more and more effective on the basketball court and, and became more and more the old Hank that his teammates remembered. All of them, to a man, said it wasn't the same Hank after his first collapse and after the amount of medication he was taking. But apparently, the medication, uh, after being removed, was not enough to stop the second collapse on the court, Chris. Yeah, he convinced the doctors of all this, and, and we heard the doctors out uh, at, the, at the hospital this evening. It's too early to speculate exactly were he not playing basketball, would this have happened, and, and that's dangerous speculation at this point. But did he have a feeling that anything else might, might happen? No, he was looking to the future. He, he felt 100%. He, he said he, he had no idea this would happen again. Obviously, obviously, when you're a basketball player, you want to focus on the game and uh, on getting back to 100%. But no, neither him nor Coach Paul Westhead nor his teammates felt there was any chance of a recurrence, and as I said, as the medication was backed off of Gathers, he felt much more like 100%. You know, the, the case of Terry Cummings comes to mind, a uh, great player to Paul, I guess when he was with the San Diego Clippers, and, and actually, he's built uh, very similar to Gathers, they, they kind of play the same sort of game, uh, and he uh, w was in question with his heart at the time, and then he, of course, is going on to enjoy tremendous success with the Bucks and now the San Antonio Spurs. Did that name ever come up in conversation with Hank? Yes, it did. We talked about Terry Cummings. He was very encouraged that he had been able to recover. It's funny you mentioned it. Many people say there's a similarity physically between Terry Cummings, not only facially, but also in his big, bulky physique. When you look at a guy like Gathers and you see that powerful body and his ability on the court, it's, it's almost inconceivable that he could have a weakness in the heart that would lead to this, this kind of a tragedy. Well, tonight uh, the sporting world uh, learned uh, or was reminded of something that you don't have to be involved with in sports to understand, that life itself is so very fragile. And uh, someone with so much hope, Hank Gathers, dead shortly after his 23rd birthday, collapsed on the court tonight uh, in Los Angeles, pronounced dead an hour and 20 minutes later, uh, a little less than an hour and a half ago. Sports Center will continue with more right after this. This one, Hank Gathers, All-American, Loyola Marymount, uh, playing in a quarterfinal game in the WCC postseason tournament against Portland, about seven minutes in, collapsed on the court in Los Angeles. A little more than an hour later, he was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital of heart failure, a cause of that heart failure unknown at this point. Chris Fowler rejoins me now. Had just turned 23, a certain first-round pick uh, in the NBA w uh, would have been Gathers uh, so much ahead of him. Oh, certainly. His, his first love was basketball. He was looking forward to playing in the NBA. Felt much better after his first collapse in December as the medication was backed off. Here's a look back. Gathers at Dobbins Tech, leading that high school to the Philadelphia Public Championship, along with his friend Bo Kimball. And those guys transferred to USC, or rather enrolled to USC, and then transferred to Loyola Marymount, along with Kimball, eventually helping rebuild that program, turn it around, something he was very proud of. 
Last year in his junior season, Gathers led the nation both in rebounds and in scoring average. Only Xavier McDaniel had done that before him. On December 9th versus UC Santa Barbara, after a free throw, Gathers suddenly fainted at the foul line, walked off on his own, and after further examination, was diagnosed as an irregular heartbeat. He was given medication, passed a battery of tests, and was able to return to the court after doctors deemed it was okay just two games after collapsing. And as the medication began to be reduced, Gathers came back to his true form. He got stronger. He finished the regular season sixth in the nation in points per game. And again, Gathers had seemed to be getting his game back to 100% and looked forward to a career in the NBA. And after that, he wanted to be a sportscaster along with his friend, Bo Kimball. So a tragic end to a career that ended much too soon and a life that was much too short for him. And uh, a guy who was... Uh carried himself much larger than he did on the basketball court, which is uh, pretty considerable when you consider that he led the uh, NCAA in scoring and rebounding last year. Uh, a, a guy who, who was very sensitive, very intelligent, and, and I guess you got to know a little bit. You'll remember him. A beloved guy and a leader, not only in his team, but uh, been in all of college basketball. Yeah, life is uh, fragile, and our, our deepest sympathies, condolences to Hank Gather's family. He died uh, earlier this evening in Los Angeles. We'll be back at Sports Center in a moment. everybody, I'm George Michael and welcome to the Sports Machine. Tonight, through the use of the Sports Machine, the Chicago Bulls run around Larry Bird and the Celtics as the Bulls become one of the hot teams in the NBA. The Great White Shark makes his first 1990 American appearance, one to remember. It is without question the wildest skiing competition in the West. And tonight, you'll be rolling for the plays of the month of February. I'm sorry to tell you the tragedy in college basketball is the headline tonight. Loyola Marymount forward Hank Gathers collapsed at center court tonight in the first half of the West Coast Conference tournament game against Portland. Gathers was given CPR by paramedics. He was then rushed to a hospital where he died at 6.55 West Coast time. Gathers, the nation's sixth leading scorer, had led the nation last year. He had collapsed in a December game in a game against Santa Barbara. Now, at that time, doctors discovered that Gathers had an irregular heartbeat. He was subsequently given medication to correct the condition and was cleared to play again. But tonight, in a basketball game, Hank Gathers in the West Coast Conference semifinal was playing Portland. This play, in the first half of the game, is an alley-oop pass to number 44, Hank Gathers. He routinely, as always, slammed it down. Now, Hank Gathers was a man who had felt that he was very fortunate because he was back, he was healthy, he had collapsed in December, the medication appeared to make him 100% healthy. But after making the basket, he suddenly would collapse at center court. He would go down. He would then try to get up. His mother and his sister were both at courtside. Having collapsed earlier in the year, it was hoped that perhaps he would be able to recover. 23 years old, six foot seven, Hank Gathers, who had moved from Philadelphia. He led the nation in scoring last year. He averaged 29 points a game this year. He was taken to Freeman Marina Hospital. There he died of cardiac arrest. Hank Gathers, 23 years old, six foot seven, dead at the age of 23. at Loyola University's Sacred Heart Chapel as the thoughts of the basketball world are with the family, the teammates, and the friends of the departed Hank Gathers. Gathers died last night of an apparent heart attack. Chris Myers was on hand last night and today in Los Angeles. Basketball was good to Hank Gathers. Life was unfair. The day after his tragic death, the court was empty. The campus saddened. The flag at half mast. Loyola's alumni gym looked more like a chapel. This is a great tragedy. Uh, there's no explanation for it that I know of. Our whole campus is grieving. Gathers teammates, after witnessing his last basket and collapse Sunday night, struggled with the reality of losing their leader. Before the game in the locker room, Hank said, I feel as strong as ever. 
And we just don't understand how a man that strong could leave us so quickly. I'm almost 100% certain that if, if he had 10 more seconds, this is the way that he would want to leave us on the basketball court. Uh, he was our guy uh, as a player and as a person. He was the leader of our team. He was the fiber of what we are. Unmarried and just three weeks into his 23rd birthday, Gathers was just getting back to top form on the floor after a December feigning spell, which was related to an irregular heartbeat. After missing two games, cardiologist Vernon Hattori put Gathers on medication and cleared him to play. Dr. Hattori met with Gather's family Monday, but was unavailable for comment. Many medical questions remain. Lions head coach Paul Westhead said he saw no danger in Gather's continuing to play. And Loyola will continue to play when the NCAA tournament starts because they say Gather's would have wanted it that way. His love for the game was great, and so was his love for children. Hank represents the little kid in all of us. Because to Hank Gathers, basketball was play. And we all want to play. Tuesday, a memorial mass for Gathers will be held here on the Loyola campus, a campus filled with people that a year ago influenced his decision to stay in school and earn a degree rather than turn pro. Gathers will be missed by all. He'll be remembered for his greatness, his enthusiasm, and his zest for life. I just, I know he's listening. I just love him so, so much. And I'm going to miss you, Hank. An undefeated basketball team, the 27-1 LaSalle Explorers for the MAC Championship. Of course, this game touched more so than most by the tragic death of Hank Gathers, Doug Overton, the high school teammate, Lionel Simmons, a good friend, and Lionel Simmons also arguably maybe the best player in the country. Uh, uh, they're going to bounce back. The kids really handle it beautifully. He's a sensational, quiet player, Michael. He can rebound, he can run the floor, and an excellent passer as well as his scoring ability. Okay, again, LaSalle may be a well-kept secret in the country, but not for long. One of the better teams you will see coming up, the MAC Conference Championship. The Explorers hope to take that trophy home on the L train. Chip on the line. Let's pick up the starting lineups with PA announcer Ed O'Brien. Number 42, Dan O'Sullivan. At the guard, a 5'11 senior from Highland Falls, New Jersey. Number 12, Andre McClendon. And now the lineup for the Sound Explorers. At forward, a 6'7 senior from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Linux, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Hurd. At center, a 6'9 sophomore from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, number 44, Milko Levers. At guard, a great record at LaSalle and again LaSalle here's how they got to the final of course they have a north and south division here in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference LaSalle a winner over Fairfield and then beat Siena last night Siena hung in for a while with a big crowd on hand to support them but LaSalle just pulled away in the end and Fordham across with the win over Iona and then an upset win over a very good Holy Cross club to get to the final tonight would ask everyone to observe. And right now, we are going to pause for a moment of silence for Hank Gathers.
And the ties between Hank Gathers and this LaSalle team are many, many rather. And if we take a look here at a moment at our game notes for tonight's game, we're going to see only one loss for LaSalle came to Loyola Marymount. And as we were talking with Speedy Morris before the game, Hank Gathers hit the free throws to hand LaSalle their only loss. And left-handed, he said, too, didn't he? Yes. He had been struggling on the free throw line. Fordham comes in, winners of five straight, and Coach Nick McCarchuk, who we spent some time with this morning, told us that this was a very, very confident Fordham basketball team that'll take the floor against the L train. Lionel Simmons. Well, they feel they have some answers in the size category, Mike, and uh, here's the point. They're big, strong kids and might wear the Explorers down a little bit. Tap is controlled by Andre McClendon. We'll set the names for you early. Jean Free. Laura at noon at Loyola Marymount to honor their fallen hero, Hank Gathers. Loyola Marymount player died of an apparent heart attack, although the exact cause of death will not be known for seven to ten days. Hank Gathers will be remembered as the nation's leading scorer a year ago and one of the nation's standouts, but as our Chris Fowler has won, who will remember him as much, much more than just a basketball player. His physique and his commanding presence gave off an air of invulnerability. Hank Gathers was a symbol of strength to those who knew him, and it was his strength of will that made him a basketball star. Nothing, not even hoops, came easily. He was born Eric Gathers and given the nickname Hank as a toddler. He grew up in the Rosen Projects in North Philadelphia, raised by his mother, Lucille. His father is a recovering alcoholic who was rarely around the house. A priest, Father Dave Hagen, became a surrogate parent to Hank. Much poorer than a basketball player. Exuded life and uh, lived it to the fullest and uh, died slam dunking on everybody. I mean, you know, in, in the best sense of that word. The summer before he entered high school, Hank met Bo Kimball on a playground court. They became best friends, as close as brothers. They had been teammates ever since. How would you think Hank would like to be remembered now? Well, he did. Well, a guy who uh, gave 100% on and off the court. Uh, a guy who wanted to be thought of as care a very caring person, genuine, having all the qualities that you know people would look for in a, a very good basketball player. You know, and, and Hank had that. Uh, he took time out for little kids, just all the little extra things that you don't have to do. Hank would do those things, and that made him the special person that he is. Bo and Hank led Dobbins Tech to the Philadelphia City title, along with guard Doug Overton, now at LaSalle. LaSalle superstar Lionel Simmons was on the losing side in that city title game. Since then, he and Gathers had maintained a close friendship despite living on opposite coasts. He heard the tragic news late in the Explorers game last night. You know, he was definitely one of the hardest workers in the game. You know, he lived and dreamed basketball his entire life, and uh, it's one of the things, you know, he'll, he'll be remembered with me for the rest of my life. Gathers and Kimball went west together and played as freshmen at USC. A year later, they transferred to Loyola Marymount, and since then, the Lions have roared. Gathers blossomed to superstardom, leading the nation in scoring and rebounding last year, something only one other player had done. His game was based on sweat, on desire, on outworking opponents. We called him Bankman because we went to him for everything. We went to him for rebounds, for points, for life. Gathers was just months away from becoming a first-round NBA selection, from fulfilling the dream of providing his family financial security. At LMU, he always had time for well-wishers and for the media. He'd been preparing for a second career as a sportscaster, a goal shared by his best friend. But there's two dynamite point guards here at Loyola Marymount University, and I'm talking about TNT, Tony Walker and Terrell Lowry. In December, Gather's outlook on life suddenly changed. He collapsed on the court, his first serious health problem. But that night, Hank walked off the floor. Doctors pronounced him fit to return after he'd missed two games. As his dosage of medication was slowly reduced, Gather's became less sluggish. He looked like the Hank of old until the collapse last night. In a conversation five weeks ago, he was looking forward to a full, normal life. Now things have seemed to fall in place for me, and I know exactly what happened to me, picture perfect. And um, 
I hope it never happens again. I don't think it will. I just, I know he's listening. I just love him so, so much. And I'm gonna miss you, Hank. in the NCAA tournament in 1988 and suffer a reduction in basketball scholarships. Tomorrow in Los Angeles, an autopsy will be performed on Loyola Marymount basketball star Hank Gathers. Yesterday, Gathers died shortly after making a dunk in Loyola's semifinal tournament game with Portland. Gathers collapsed at midcourt. He was immediately given medical attention, but efforts to resuscitate the 23-year-old failed. The cause of death is not yet known. Gathers had a previous history of irregular heartbeat and collapsed in a game back in December. Doctors put Gathers through a series of tests and he was given clearance to play while on medication. Gathers' teammates have not yet decided whether they'll continue their season in the upcoming NCAA tournament, saying it's still a very emotional time. Reggie who hadn't yet even realized his prime years being felled by a failing heart. Across the country from Los Angeles and Philadelphia, where Gathers grew up, the entire community felt the effects. It was even harder for some of his boyhood friends, several of whom play for LaSalle, who played the MAC Finals a short while ago against Fordham tonight in Albany. Lionel Simmons, Doug Overton, Bobby Johnson all thought about not playing tonight, but then reconsidered, feeling the Gathers would have wanted them to play on. Moment of silence before tonight's MAC Final, LaSalle against Fordham. Everybody in the arena remembered Hank Gathers at the Palestra Atlantic 10 Finals. Gathers hometown, the same feeling. John Cheney last night. Hank Gathers just epitomized so much of what life's all about. This basketball game with nothing. The kid who's a soldier for a lot of kids. Champions, a lot of causes. To hear that just devastated. How unfair is it? They talked with some people involved in the Sun Belt final. Long way away, really. Most folks, no connection except through the sport of college basketball. And even they tonight said it was not quite the same. Very important game for that team, but I think all the way through this tournament, Dan, it, it, it won't quite be the same. He would want everybody to play basketball, but he'll always be remembered in some ways, perhaps his tournament in some way. Probably so. John Chaney, the Temple coach, he had recruited Hank Gathers, Gathers out of Philadelphia, and uh, I think that's why John Chaney feeling a little bit more of an emotional bond there. We will be back uh, a little bit later on in the show to look at the career of Hank Gathers. But uh, coming up during this hour-long edition of Sports Center, we will try to take a look at uh, why he died as we will talk to a doctor who will try to explain the death of Hank Gathers. is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Welcome back to this special hour-long edition this evening of Sports Center. We continue our focus on the uh, tragic death of Hank Gathers. The heart. Perhaps it's the part of the body that uh, all of us uh, should know a lot about. Not many of us do. And as we try to understand what happened uh, in Los Angeles yesterday, I think it's time to a little bit learn a little bit more about the heart. Well, joining us now, Dr. Paul Thompson, an associate professor at Brown University, who is an expert in sports-related cardiac arrest. And, Doctor, when we look at this situation, did it matter that he was a basketball player? Could it have just been a regular person who was active on the weekend? Or the fact that he was an active player have a lot to do with it? Exercise does increase the risk of having a problem like that. In other words, when you are engaged in exercise, what happens is you release a lot of adrenaline into the bloodstream. And that makes these problems that athletes can have, these arrhythmias, more frequent. We've got a couple of slides here that I think you can, that are going to come up shortly. You're going to hear the word arrhythmia a lot over the next few days. You can see on this arrow, the arrow I have drawn to one of the normal heartbeats. Okay, the, the arrows indicate the normal heartbeats. And then you see circled, an abnormal or a, an early beat, and then that's followed by a pause. That's a skipped beat. Now, this is very important. These are very common. 10 to 40% of normal people have these skipped beats. 
We have another picture, however, um, if we can bring that up, of a run of skipped beats. This is called ventricular tachycardia. This can be a benign sort of thing, but it's usually abnormal. And then finally, we have what we think happened to Hank Gathers on the last slide. You can see I've put the arrow to some normal beats. I've circled one abnormal beat, and then there's a whole string of abnormal beats together. Now, what these are, these are twitching of the heart. You know, when you have a twitch in one of your muscles, and the heart is simply a muscle, when you have a twitch in a muscle, it's not powerful enough to move the leg or to move your arm when you have a muscle twitch. When you get this list of arrhythmias, this, lo this long string of arrhythmias, the heart is actually twitching. It's not strong enough to move blood around with each one of those twitches. That's the common final pathway in sudden death in an athlete like Gathers. Gathers was on medication. In fact, uh, there were reports that he was taking medication on Sunday prior to the game. He was trying to decrease that. He said it made him lethargic. Could that have had anything to do with his death, the fact that he was trying to diminish how much he was taking? It's possible. You know, Dan, there are Monday morning quarterbacks, and I don't want to be a Monday morning physician. I didn't take care of him. But decreasing the medicines could have caused a problem. On the other hand, we now know, cardiologists now know, that sometimes these medicines can cause the problem. So I don't want to second guess his doctors. He was on medication. He was under, um, he was under uh, good care. You know, there'll be a big tendency to go back and, and look at this again and, and uh, try to second guess. I, I can't do that. I, I must say that anyone who has been practicing medicine for a long period of time has an occasional problem. You know, if you've been a cook, and you haven't gotten burned in the kitchen, um, you haven't been cooking very long. Are you surprised that the hospital hasn't released any findings here, that it's, it's caused a lot of speculation on how he died or why he died? Yeah, that's always a problem. This speculation causes anxiety. I personally wish that they would release some information because I think it would put a lot of people's minds to rest. But that sometimes depends on how the family feels about this information. You know, one of the things will come up, my kid plays basketball, your kid plays basketball, should I take my, my child off to see a doctor? In general, no. Um, you know, athletics exercise is very safe. It's the fact that we pay so much attention to these sudden deaths during exercise, it's because they're rare events. They shock us because they're not common, they're unusual. One final question, here's a guy who was an All-American who was probably going to be a first round draft pick. The school wanted him to play. Should he have played after we saw that warning sign when he blacked out in a game in December? And I know you don't want to be an armchair doctor here, but was there a risk of trying to get this guy into play because he wanted to play, he wanted to be a first-round draft pick? Dan, any time that someone has actually passed out during exertion, they are at increased risk to have a problem like this. But you've got to think of the pressures that were here. I would be reluctant to say to a, to say to a young man like Gathers, you can't play basketball again kiss all those millions goodbye. I'm sure his cardiologist and he felt the exact same way. In retrospect, no, of course he shouldn't pay, uh, play. But in prospect, if I was his doctor, I don't think I could have made that judgment then either. All right. Dr. Paul Thompson, thank you for your time. We appreciate the uh, drive down from Providence, uh, a drive that some of us have gotten to know a little bit. We appreciate uh, enlightening us a little bit. Uh, still to come here on the Sports Center, Maryland gets the word today. We'll get the word from the ACC commissioner, Gene Corrigan, about the Terrapin's fate and also other topics when we talk to him live. Sports Center. It's completed today, but details were not released, pending a toxicology report, which should be out due toward the end of the week. But doctors who have seen videotape of gathers from last night have formed an opinion. He had instantaneous loss of circulation, loss of consciousness. If you notice that he regained consciousness again, and then he lost it again, which can occur. His death last night touched many lives, not the least of which were those of Lionel Simmons and Doug Overton of LaSalle. They grew up with, uh, with uh, gathers in Philadelphia. Tonight, mourning the death of their friend, they played Fordham for the championship of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. A moment of silence before the game. The two players dedicate tonight's game to gathers, and they go out and win. Simmons scoring in the paint there, playing very well. LaSalle. The 11th ranked team in the nation wins at 71-61. More tests on the body of Hank Gathers have been ordered, delaying an autopsy report until completion of those examinations. Meanwhile, Rick Lozano has reaction from students at Loyola Marymount. Today, even bright sunlight could not illuminate the somber atmosphere at LMU. Flags flew at half-mast for a fallen hero. Gathers was a man among boys on the basketball court, a player who helped solidify the Lions as one of the most exciting teams in the country. But Hank Gathers wasn't all basketball. As important as he was to the Lions on the court, 
he was equally important to Loyola Marymount as a student. It's, it's a solemn atmosphere. Everyone's just really broken up. Hank's a friend to everybody. He was pretty much the spokesperson for the school. And I've told everyone the same thing, and I'll tell you, he was a great basketball player, but he was a hundred times better a person. It's really bad. It's like you go to class, no one talks. People crying. I don't know. I don't really, really want to talk about Today, just the mood on campus, everybody's really somber and just a very heavy atmosphere. He's going to be sadly missed. He was more than just an athlete, more than just a player. He's just a friend to everybody. Indeed, Hank Gathers was much, much more than a one-dimensional force. King of the court, yes. But it is also true that this lion was king of the campus. This is Rick Lozano reporting. NCAA Center Turner Broadcasting System. On CNN Sports tonight, the NCAA postseason field of 64 is building up. And now there are eight schools. But on the downside, Maryland basketball knocks itself for a loop called NCAA probation. On the NBA floor, the battle of Texas and the pivot, it's Akeem against Mr. Robinson. On the ice, the Wings and Rangers. And off the ice, with the trading deadline tomorrow, there was action today. And we'll have the stunned reaction from the Hank Gathers friend. Hi, everybody. Welcome to CNN Sports Tonight. I'm Hannah Storm. I'm Nick Charles. Fred Hickman has the night off, and the world of college basketball is in a state of shock tonight mm -hmm. following Hank Gathers' tragic death last night. It, the shockwaves just rippled across the country today, and it's still sudden, sorrowful, and saddening. And I'll tell you one thing, though. Hank Gathers certainly left his mark and his impression on this world. The death of Loyola basketball player Hank Gathers is still so difficult to believe, though. The image of a young athlete so full of life collapsed on the floor of Gerson Pavilion was so shocking. Gathers' enthusiasm on the court had carried over to the rest of his life. The big man was really a little kid at heart. He simply loved to play. And he was a guy who could make people laugh. But the day after his death, there was only stunned silence on the Loyola Marymount campus. Here's Michael Kamen. Loyola Marymount University is mourning the loss of a close friend. There is only shock and sorrow. He was the leader of our team. He was the fiber of what we are. Uh, whatever we were, it was Hank's team. Words fail to describe the devastation felt in Loyola's Gersten Pavilion Sunday afternoon. Hank Gathers had been at the top of his game, in the prime of his life. Then, in an instant, he was gone. Before the game in the locker room, Hank said, I feel as strong as ever. And we just don't understand how a man that strong could leave us so quickly. Gathers had collapsed during a game last December 9th. He went through three weeks of tests before returning to the lineup. Doctors had detected a slight arrhythmia, an irregular heartbeat. Gathers was being treated with medication, the dosage of which had been reduced in recent weeks. I guess his situation was if he's going to, you know, uh, there's not a certainty that if he didn't play that this wouldn't have happened. So he was going to play doing, you know, something that he really loved. And he, he, he went out the way he wanted to go out. The cardiologist involved in Hank Gathers' treatment told us he'd rather not comment until he's had a chance to review the autopsy reports. The final results aren't scheduled to be released for several more days. For now, for those closest to Hank Gathers, all that's really secondary. In Philadelphia, where Gathers grew up and learned the game he loved, he'll never be forgotten. Exuded life and uh, lived it to the fullest and uh, died slam dunking on everybody. If we'd finished practice at 6 o'clock, uh, I wouldn't leave the gym until 6.45 until the custodian turned the lights out because he wouldn't leave. He just wanted to work and work. I always felt that he was going to be a great NBA player because of the way he competed. And uh, he was a special, special athlete. And nobody knows Gathers' constant drive for excellence better than his childhood friend and teammate for the past decade, Bo Kimball. I just, I know he's listening. I just love him so, so much. And I'm going to miss you, Hank. Michael Kalman, CNN, Los Angeles. The flags on the Loyola campus were flown at half-staff today, but classes did go on as scheduled. 
A memorial service will be held tomorrow at the Jesuit University Sacred Heart Chapel. At Dobbins Tech in Philadelphia, where Gathers and his teammate Bo Kimball went to high school, a moment of silence was also held. It was also held at the 76ers game this evening. Meanwhile, the Lions have postponed any decision about continuing their season, but they did appear to be leaning towards accepting a berth in the NCAA tournament. The WCC tournament was canceled about four hours after Gathers' death last night. Conference officials then offered the bid to Loyola, the runaway champion in the regular season. The NCAA tournament begins March 15th. As was mentioned earlier, Gathers had collapsed during a game last December and was found then to have an irregular heartbeat. He was on medication but had convinced doctors to cut back on the drug, which made him drowsy. While it's not known if that decision ultimately cost him his life, everybody wants an answer as to what happened. It's just that the answer is not there yet. An autopsy is scheduled and a final opinion could take a while. Gathers, though, had been cleared by his doctor to play following his first collapse in December. Tonight I spoke with Dr. Robert Schultz, who two weeks ago implanted a pacemaker in South Carolina basketball player Joe Rett, who suffers from arrhythmia. The same affliction Gathers had. Dr. Schultz, of course, is in no position to diagnose Gathers, but said the condition he suffered from causes the electrical system of the heart to malfunction, causing the heart to stop beating for as long as several seconds. And what could have happened was not a physiological disease or a deficiency of anatomy, but simply that the heart stopped beating for no apparent reason, leading Hank Gathers to drop dead without a heart attack because of a quirk in his electrical system. Preliminary autopsy re results should tell us something, but a full study and a final opinion by doctors could take weeks. Anna? Among those devastated by Hank Gathers' death, death was LaSalle forward Lionel Simmons. Simmons was a close friend of Gathers. They played together for year after year in Philadelphia. When Simmons heard the news during last night's Metro Atlantic Conference game against Siena, he broke down. He wept on the bench. Besides Simmons, two of LaSalle's other top players, Doug Overton and Bobby Johnson, were also friends of Gathers. All three had said that they might not play tonight in their tournament title game. But all three did what their friend probably would have wanted them to do, and they fought for that title. At Knickerbocker Arena in Albany, LaSalle meeting Fordham, the entire team, including the L train, suiting up, and on the back of his shoes, Hank, as he played in his memory and played so well. Lionel Simmons, the slam dunk, putting his team up by three. LaSalle building a six-point lead in the second half. Simmons, perfect position for the offensive board and the bucket. LaSalle up 47 to 39, but Fordham fighting back within three. The Rams were stubborn, made a game of it. Sanford Jenkins with the layup, but LaSalle held on down the stretch. Lionel Simmons with the bucket and the foul to put the Explorers up by four. And then tonight, something to celebrate. As LaSalle wins the Metro Atlantic Conference Tournament, the champion of that conference now getting the automatic NCAA berth and winning in memory of Gathers. The Explorers finished with a 28-1 record, 21 straight wins, the longest streak in the NCAA. We all got together after the game last night and I decided that, you know, if Hank was alive, that Hank would definitely want us to play the game. And, you know, he was a hard worker and one who definitely uh, achieved a lot on the court. And, you know, I thought that he would want us to play the ball game, you know, even though there was a lot of adversity, you know. I he himself is the strongest man in college basketball. His coach called him a walking thunderbolt. His teammates called him the bank man, as in Money in the Bank. ESPN's Chris Fowler looks back on a career that touched many, but has now left many wanting more. His physique and his commanding presence gave off an air of invulnerability. Hank Gathers was a symbol of strength to those who knew him, and it was his strength of will that made him a basketball star. Nothing, not even hoops, came easily. He was born Eric Gathers and given the nickname Hank as a toddler. He grew up in the Rosen Projects in North Philadelphia, raised by his mother, Lucille. His father is a recovering alcoholic who was rarely around the house. A priest, Father Dave Hagen, became a surrogate parent to Hank much poorer than a basketball player. Exuded life and uh, lived it to the fullest and uh, died slam dunking on everybody. I mean, you know, in, in the best sense of that word. The summer before he entered high school, Hank met Bo Kimball on a playground court. They became best friends, as close as brothers. They had been teammates ever since. How would you think Hank would like to be remembered now? Well, he did. Well, a guy who, uh, gave 100% on and off the court, uh, a guy who wanted to be thought of as care a very caring person, genuine, having all the qualities that, you know, people would look for in a, a very good basketball player, you know, and, and Hank had that, uh, took time out for little kids.
just all little extra things that you don't have to do. Hank would do those things, and that made him the special person that he is. Bo and Hank led Dobbins Tech to the Philadelphia City title, along with guard Doug Overton, now at LaSalle. LaSalle superstar Lionel Simmons was on the losing side in that city title game. Since then, he and Gathers had maintained a close friendship, despite living on opposite coasts. He heard the tragic news late in the Explorers game last night. You know, he was definitely one of the hardest workers in the game. You know, he lived and dreamed basketball his entire life, and uh, it's one of the things, you know, he'll, he'll be remembered with me for the rest of my life. Gathers and Kimball went west together and played as freshmen at USC. A year later, they transferred to Loyola Marymount, and since then, the Lions have roared. Gathers blossomed to superstardom, leading the nation in scoring and rebounding last year, something only one other player had done. His game was based on sweat, on desire, on outworking opponents. We called him Bankman because we went to him for everything. We went to him for rebounds, for points, for life. Gathers was just months away from becoming a first-round NBA selection, from fulfilling the dream of providing his family financial security. At LMU, he always had time for well-wishers and for the media. He'd been preparing for a second career as a sportscaster, a goal shared by his best friend. But there's two dynamite point guards here at Loyola Marymount University, and I'm talking about TNT, Tony Walker and Terrell Lowry. In December, Gathers' outlook on life suddenly changed. He collapsed on the court, his first serious health problem. But that night, Hank walked off the floor. Doctors pronounced him fit to return after he'd missed two games. As his dosage of medication was slowly reduced, Gathers became less sluggish. He looked like the Hank of old until the collapse last night. In a conversation five weeks ago, he was looking forward to a full, normal life. Now things have seemed to fall in place for me, and I know exactly what happened to me, picture perfect. And um, I hope it never happens again. I don't think it will. I can't say enough about Hank. It's, you know, he's one of the, the best people in the world. I mean, you know, he always was, was nice to everyone. And then, Marymount's Gersten Pavilion will be remembered for a long, long time. But for those who were there in Los Angeles today to pay their last respects to the fallen All-American, it was a day that will never be forgotten. Chris Myers reports. Time has passed. The deep-felt sorrow for Hank Gathers remains strong. On the same floor where he took his last breath, a multitude gathered for a mass in his honor. The university suspended all classes Tuesday. The memorial service was moved from the school's chapel to Gersten Pavilion to accommodate the thousands who came to pay their respects. People lined Loyola Boulevard. It was eerie. So many people still so silent. His casket was carried in by his teammates into the Lions gym. A gym which holds 4,000 for basketball was filled by more than 5,000 mourners. He was an impact player. He had impact on the court, on his university, on this city, on this country. Hank said the NBA team that drafts me will be very lucky. Maybe God needed a power forward in heaven. His mother, brothers, and sister were joined by students from other schools, players from other leagues. His coach and best friend offered reflection. For all of us to go on to the task, for Hank, the decision would be simple and easy. 
clear the floor. He would fight for that. Hank Gathers, termed by those who knew him as a real player in life, led the nation in scoring, rebounding, and friends. I know that Hank will win. To hear one more, one more cheer, one more clap from his fans, friends, the people who supported him. One last applause in his house. I don't know whether it's necessary to do any totals on that last game or not.